by law, as a magician, we have to have fun. So are you guys down to have some fun? Yeah. Okay, cool. So my name, it really is, first of all, a true, true pleasure to be here with you guys. This has been quite a dream of mine to stand on any sort of TED platform. I think the whole mission of this organization is amazing. So my name is Adam Wilbur, and I am a magician, I'm an inventor, and I'm a mentalist. You know what that means for my two kids, right? They get away with absolutely nothing, okay? Um, but it also means that as, as my job, I have to really focus on perspective. See, what I do in my day job is invent magic tricks for other magicians. I work with an amazing team of creatives where we dream up the most impossible ideas we can. I mean, our job is quite literally to take impossible and bring that to fruition. While it's an amazing job, it's also a very challenging job and one that makes us, almost forces us to keep our perspective on what's possible and what's not possible in check at all times. My goal for you guys today is that when you leave here, maybe you leave here with a little bit more of a, a curious outlook on life. And of course, we'll have some fun along the way. So as a speaker, it's been told to me that my job is to try and win my audience over in the first couple minutes. So I figured what better way to win the audience over than bribery, right? So I'm gonna actually break the magician's code. What I'm gonna do is teach you guys a trick. Now first I'll show you the trick, hopefully it fools you, but then I'll walk you through step by step exactly how you can do it for your friends and family. Does that sound fun? Do you guys wanna learn a trick? Yeah. Awesome. Now this trick is very near and dear to my heart. It's the first trick I ever learned when I was six years old. Now imagine this, at six years old, I walk up to my father and I show him a magic trick and his response was, how the hell did you do that? At six years old, for your father to say that to you, it is the most liberating and empowering thing you could hear. So I never looked back and for the last 30 years, I've been studying and performing magic. So this trick specifically is the trick that started that off and I'd like to share it with you now. It's called the silk trick for pretty apparent reasons, right? It uses a red silk. The idea is quite simple. You take the silk and po poke it into your fists like this. Now, when I did this trick to my dad, he gave me a funny look and I went, ah, dad, you think I'm putting it up my sleeve? I'll put my sleeve up just a bit so you see that's not the case. But as the silk goes all the way into the fist, every good magic trick has what's called the cliched magic gesture or pose. It looks like this. I know it looks goofy, but it makes the magic happen because that silk is now an egg. <laughs> Pretty cool, right? Actually, the silk jumped into my pocket. Thank you, ma'am. If you're going to clap, move around. Make it look like a crowd, okay? Thank you. So that is the very first trick I ever learned as a magician. Now, here's the thing about magic tricks. Once you know the secret to the trick, it's really pretty stupid, okay? I gotta be honest, this trick is no different. All you need for this trick to work is a bright red silk and one of these. Yeah, I know, I know. It's a fake egg with a hole in it, it's a wooden egg. Now, of course, these are laid by decoy ducks. Thank you for the couple that got the joke, I appreciate that. So what you need are two silks. Here's a pro tip for you. You're gonna wanna make sure the silks are the same color. Makes the trick a lot better, okay? The next thing you need is this fake wooden egg, and you can get this at any hobby store. Now that you have your props, the next part of the trick is called the setup. It's where the props go before the trick. So I, I'm right-handed, so I take the fake egg and I put it in my left pocket. I take one of the silks and I leave it sort of in full view. And then the other silk goes in your other pocket. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna walk out on stage and you're gonna palm the fake egg. Palming just means holding it in my hand in a non-suspect kind of way. Okay, so I'm just kind of holding it this way so they don't see it. Now, if I come out and take the fake egg out like this, all your eyes go right to my hand because it's the only thing moving. So here's the way to combat that. You walk out and say, hey, I'm going to do a trick with a silk. And everyone looks at the silk and allows me to pull the fake egg out. Okay, now that you've got the egg, you stroke it over your hand, the silk over your hand to make it look like your hand is empty. And then the rest is very simple. You just poke the silk into the hole in the egg. Now, if you're a funny person, this is a good time to tell a joke. I will say one thing not to do. Don't show it this way because they'll see it going in and they'll go, what the heck is in his hand, right? So you push it all the way in and that cliched magic gesture that I told you about, that is real. And the reason, it's called building dramatic tension. 
So they're wondering, what's this crazy guy doing with a silk? You give them one of these, and they go, what the heck? But then you show it's turned to an egg, and the silk is in the other pocket. Another pro tip, practice the trick once or twice, OK? <laughs> and then you show the silk has jumped out. Now, there is a problem with this trick. It's flawed. See, I perform a lot at corporate events where I'm surrounded. And if you're in a position where there are people behind you, it's not a great trick, because they get a nasty view from the fake egg into the silk, right? You don't want that. But see, my friends, this is where perspective really comes into play. Because if we can choose to change what our minds see this as, for instance, let's not look at this as a fake egg with a hole in it and a silk inside. But better yet, let's look at it as a real egg with no hole whatsoever. Thank you very much. Now watch the egg. See, I believe real magic happens when, in life, we can take the challenges and circumstances that life gives us, and we can choose to change our perspective on how we look at those challenges. That's where the real magic happens. And I'll drink to that. Cheers. Thank you so much. That is the dirtiest trick I do, so don't worry about that. Now, if you look up perspective in the dictionary, the first thing that comes up they say it's the ability to draw something on a two-dimensional plane as to give it height, depth, and width. And I figured I'd do one of my favorite magic tricks to really emphasize that. How can you draw something to give it a little bit of a different perspective than you may have thought? And also being a magician, it's a, almost an unwritten rule that I've got to do at least one card trick in every show. So I'm going to do that now. Um, Ma'am in the front, what's your name? Tessa? Tessa? That is correct. Pretty good, huh? Thank you very much. That's mentalism. Tessa, everyone's going to clap for you as you join me right on stage. Watch how cool this is. Everyone clap for Tessa. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. You're going to be the eyes and the ears of the audience. All you have to do is verify. Is that a real deck of cards? Yes. Nothing funny about it. A whole bunch of different cards, right? I'm going to have you pick a card, but it's very important that this is a card you want. So I'm not influencing your decision in any way. What I'm going to do is go through, touch the back of a card that you'd like. This one here? Yes. Are you positive? Yes. That's the one you want. Take a look, and I'm going to show it to everybody, but I won't look. Can everybody please remember that card? And as you remember that, give Tessa one more round of applause as she takes her seat. Thank you so much, Tessa. So we've got a deck of cards. Now, what I'm going to try and do, this is a classic kind of card trick. This is called a pick a card, find a card trick. But I'm going to do it in the most artistic way I know, with it being TEDx and all. Now, Tessa, what I'd like you to do is look me right in the eyes and genuinely, in your mind, you're going to repeat your card over and over. You're not going to do this. For instance, if your card was the two of hearts, don't do this. Because I'll read your lips, right? And that makes my job too easy. But I do want you to sort of go on autopilot over and over in your mind as many times as you can. Start naming your card in your mind. Look me right in the eyes. Good. Keep going. Keep going. Good. I know it's a little weird. Perfect. You're doing great, Tessa. Thank you. Now I'm going to draw sort of a, a blank slate here. This will be our playing card. This will be our blank slate of a playing card. So first send me the suit of your card, just in your mind, the suit. Good. Perfect. You guys will notice pretty quickly that I am a much better magician than I am an artist, but I think this will suffice to get my point across. Now the value, ace, two, three, up through king. Oh, great. Tessa, you've done this before. This is perfect. Now, Tessa, in a nice, loud, clear voice, I'm going to show you a card, and it'll be a yes or a no answer. I feel pretty good about this. We're going to go for this. Tessa, nice, loud, clear voice. Is your card, be honest, the ace of spades? No? No. Are you being serious? Uh, do you guys want to see a coin trick? I know a heck of a coin trick. No, no. See, we talk about perspective here, right? And that first definition of perspective, we look at this as the ace of spades, one card, one single card. But with just a simple line, we can change the perspective completely of what this is. Now, it's a complete deck of cards, 52 cards. Your card must be in there. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's a gift. I was born with it. Uh, in all honesty, Tessa, what is the name of your card? Name it out loud so everyone can hear. The Five of Diamonds. Now that we've changed our perspective, the real magic can happen. 
the Five of Diamonds. Give Tessa one big round of applause. Tessa, this will be for you. I'll put my name on it, because at some point this will be worth about 50 cents on eBay. That's for you. Now, the one final, thank you very much, Tessa. The one final note I'd like to leave you with is, I truly do believe to find real magic in life, all we have to do is find out a way to take our perspective on the biggest challenges that life puts in front of us and flip them for our advantage. I'm a true believer, after working in this industry of inventing and creating magic for over 20 years now, I can say wholeheartedly that Henry Ford's famous saying is 100% true. And that saying goes like this, whether you believe you can or you believe you can't, you're right. And in my opinion, the only thing differentiating those two is the perspectives you take on the problems that you're faced with. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. My name's Adam Wilbur. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much. <laughs>